So why India matters? Um, um, you know, I feel that um, uh, India is, um, uh, you know, really in a very exciting time right now. Uh, there are four um, underlying factors which I've listed here. And uh, as a result of these factors, um, you know, India exhibits uh, a behavior which is unlike um, any other market. Uh, we have features of um, um, a, a growth market in terms of uh, the kind of growth that we see in volume, uh, the growth uh, in, in the consumer base, uh, the growth in the middle class, uh, and so on. Uh, the result is going to be uh, a market which is uh, growing, but it's not going to be growing in a linear fashion. Uh, by non-linear growth, I mean that uh, the future is not going to be just um, a bigger version of uh, today. The future is going to be um, uh, quite different, and we will see that uh, some of the existing products that we have, the growth for those products will uh, somewhat moderate, but that will be more than offset by uh, uh, new opportunities for, um, uh, for lubricant marketers. Uh, so if, if there's one key message that, uh, to take away, it is uh, this, that um, um, you know, uh, this is an exciting market to be. Um, if you took a, take a look back, um, uh, since uh, 2014, uh, the GDP has grown just under uh, 6%. And um, since uh, COVID, it has grown at uh, nearly 6.5%, uh, uh, 6.7% uh, per year. And uh, as a result of this, um, uh, India has moved from being uh, the 10th uh, position um, in sort of the GDP uh, league tables uh, to uh, being at the fifth position. And there's already talk on how it will be uh, taking over other economies. Of course, uh, the story is uh, quite different uh, when you consider uh, uh, these numbers on a per capita basis. But even with that, um, I think uh, this speaks to um, uh, the kind of opportunity, the kind of dynamism that is there in the market. But that's history. What about the future? Um, so when we are analyzing lube markets, uh, what we tend to do is we look at uh, gross value added. Uh, we feel that gross value added is a better indicator of uh, uh, future growth um, and uh, you know, gross value added is basically your GDP plus um, all the uh, subsidies that a government will provide to a particular sector uh, minus the, the taxation for that sector. So, you know, it takes into account uh, uh, the hand of the government to, you know, basically uh, uh, drive growth in a particular sector um, as opposed to others. So um, I've just highlighted here two sectors uh, which are very important for um, uh, the lubricants industry. There's, uh, there's manufacturing, there's transport and storage. And as you can see, um, both of those are expected to have very strong growth, um, um, you know, at least over the next 10 years and, and probably beyond that. As a result, um, um, uh, you know, this is, this is sort of the fundamental driver for um, uh, lubricant uh, demand. So in this slide, uh, while I'll be talking about the volume growth opportunities, I would also like to demystify uh, uh, the volume loss uh, which market is uh, kind of anticipating, uh, at least some parts of the market, due to penetration of sustainability efforts or electric vehicles. In the first chart, in the first chart, if you see, uh, uh, the, growth, the growth is there uh, for 20, uh, from 2022 to 2032, which is uh, over the next 10 years. And the top, uh, uh, the top uh, line over 2032 bar, uh, the white, the white uh, small piece, that is the opportunity loss that would be happening, not just from electric vehicles, but uh, that also includes uh, all the electrification happening with the Indian railways, uh, a bit of uh, metal booking fluid loss that will happen uh, uh, due, to, uh, due to making electric vehicles because electric vehicles have lesser moving parts, but even after that, and, and just to give you a perspective, uh, that, that small white uh, piece, that, that accounts only for around 120 kilotons. And you can see the amount of growth addition is happening is uh, close to uh, 1 million liters uh, is the growth that would be still happening with all the sustainability efforts that would be going on. And uh, if I was to talk on where would the maximum impact happen, negative impact, uh, uh, the maximum negative impact, whatever uh, it would happen, is in the motorcycle oil space. Uh, but fortunately, that uh, market segment itself is uh, relatively small. It just accounts for around 8% of the market. 
And this, this impact would uh, primarily be visible uh, during the second half of the 10-year period. The growth uh, opportunities are there in the other automotive segments because, uh, as Milind was uh, very rightly mentioning, that uh, EV fluids would come into, uh, come into picture and uh, uh, all these electric vehicles would be using specialty greases and gear oils. So not only volume growth would be there, there would be value growth. And you can see most of the segments, there would be negligible uh, growth even in the next 10, year, 10 to 15 year period, whether it is in the heavy duty motor oil space, whether it is in the PCMO space, which is passenger car oil space, uh, or the industrial lubricant space. The, the impact uh, because of sustainability or electrification would be very, very minimal, at least over the next 10 years. And uh, the right hand side chart, uh, you can see how the growth would be happening. The only uh, segment that would be con converging over the next 20 year period is the motorcycle oil market. And uh, you see all the, the, all the other lubricant product categories, I've, I've listed all the major lubricant product categories. Everyone is, uh, all, all, all these product categories would be growing significantly. I'll quickly touch upon how the uh, growth is uh, uh, positioned in the commercial automotive space. The volumetric growth would be phenomenal in the, uh, in the consumer automotive space uh, as compared to the value growth. Uh, needless to say that uh, 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 now in the trucking sector, uh, uh, trucking sector or, uh, or even the off-highway segment, th there's increased focus on the use of 15Ws and there's, uh, it's fast moving towards 10Ws, but I, I won't comment that uh, there would be a significant shift happening from 15Ws to 10Ws, uh, but what I can say is that new vehicles which are coming on road, at least some models which are there uh, on, on the road for, for trucks, they are already using 10Ws. So that, that uh, new vehicles would uh, continue to drive the 10Ws growth and that's uh, definitely uh, almost everything is semi-synthetic or full synthetic. Yes, the, the growth uh, is uh, tapering a bit from 2.7% to 1.8%, but, uh, but we also have to see that uh, uh, the base is increasing from 2022 to 2027. So the volumetric growth uh, year on year over the next 10 years would still, still remain at significantly high levels. Yes, uh, now talking about electrification, because I, I briefly touched upon electrification in the passenger car and motorcycle oil space. The electrification will happen in the commercial automotive segment, but uh, over, over the foreseeable future, it would be very much limited to the light commercial vehicle space. Uh, while that segment is uh, growing significantly, uh, LCVs, but the uh, volumetric lubricant demand from that uh, segment is relatively small compared to the rest of the uh, segment. So, so volumetric impact would be very, very minimal as compared to uh, the personal mobility space. And yes, uh, the chart on the second, uh, on the right hand side, you can see how on highway and off highway split. Uh, I think uh, it's more skewed towards uh, uh, on highway, and it would continue to remain in in that fashion. But, uh, but. Yes, the growth, growth uh, would, would remain strong in the first half, which would slightly taper in the second half for the reasons I've already mentioned. And a lot of, lot of factors are driving this growth for on-highway and off-highway. Like, uh, like they may have direct or in indirect impact, uh, especially on the, on, the, uh, on the purchasing behavior of the, of, of the end users. For example, uh, on-highway, uh, fleets uh, are now uh, are dominating now, which was not the situation 10, 15 years back, where owner operators were, were dominant in the, in the market space. And the reason this is important is that, and, and all these fleets, they are now run by uh, second generation uh, uh, owners. And they have a significant, because we have been speaking to uh, the fleets uh, for a really long time, and we have been noticing a key uh, difference in the way they treat maintenance as. And maintenance is very, very key for them. And this is, to some extent, being supported by OEMs who are trying to uh, give extended warranties or uh, uh, extended service contracts uh, uh, because of which uh, uh, lubricant oil changes uh, are, are taken as a key, key uh, important, important uh, thing uh, during the lifetime of a, of a vehicle. A lot of other drivers are there improving road infrastructure, which we have already covered, increasing uh, uh, the, uh, new trucks are coming uh, with uh, higher tonnages. So that, that is a, a positive thing. Uh, axle norms uh, are, are poised to keep on increasing because we would be having better, better uh, road infrastructure. And growing last mile delivery would continue to be there, but even though it would be uh, dented slightly because of EVs, but still there would be growth opportunities for the lubricants market over there. Off IV segment, uh, as uh, Milan pointed out, there would be some impact uh, in, in the mining segment, but other than that, 
it's it's not impact negative impact but the growth would be to some extent limited uh, because uh, the number of new thermal power plants being added uh, are, are, are now reducing uh, this increased focus on uh, solar and wind energy to uh, to augment the increased demand for uh, electricity but but nevertheless a uh, coal mining would continue uh, uh, at its current levels with with small growth but uh, but on the other hand, my, uh, construction and agriculture uh, segments would drive significantly the lubricant demand. Especially we have been seeing for the last five years, mechanization of farms has been a very key trend and a uh, lot, of, lot of lubricant uh, suppliers are catering to that market, uh, which, are, which are in the rural pockets, which is somewhat disorganized. Uh, but but uh, nevertheless, growth opportunities are, are good. Good. And now let's talk a bit about the uh, quality upgrades that we would see in the heavy-duty motor oil space, which accounts for a significant portion of the commercial automotive lubricants. Uh, apart from uh, heavy-duty motor oils, in the off-highway space especially, uh, uh, hydraulic and transmission fluids are very key. There is some, some shift happening. As I said, the volume growth is uh, phenomenal, but the value uh, growth would somewhat be uh, less as compared to the other segments. But you see that the, the 10W share in on-highway would significantly increase uh, to some extent in off-highways as well. Uh, and 15Ws would continue to uh, uh, command the market even over the next 10 to 15 years. Likewise, uh, uh, formulation-wise, uh, there would be increased use of semi-synthetics. Uh, again, as I said, uh, this is because of uh, 10Ws being driven by 10Ws. So uh, in the on-highway segment, uh, the share of semi-synthetic plus synthetic would uh, increase uh, slightly uh, over, over the forecast period. So yes, this is the value growth. Now, what India has been seeing is, uh, uh, is the foundation stones being set by the Indian economy for, for a growth, uh, a significant growth impetus that is, uh, uh, it's yet to come. Uh, I'm sure Satyan, uh, during his next presentation, he'll uh, uh, elaborate more on China plus one, uh, which, would, uh, which would help uh, Indian industrial, uh, uh, industrial output to grow. A significant consumer demand, consumer demand as in uh, the, uh, not the lubricant demand, but uh, consumption from all of us, the population of India, and uh, India, India has significant, uh, because of all the population growth happening in India, India has a strong domestic market itself, which would support the industrial uh, growth. But, uh, uh, but yes, this China plus one would uh, act as an uh, additional thing, which would support the exports uh, from, Indian, uh, Indian, uh, Indian ex uh, from the industrial output. So uh, in the, in the right-hand side chart, uh, uh, you can see uh, in power generation, uh, the, uh, the negative impact to some extent would be there on the generation aspect, but distribution uh, in, the power gen uh, in the power sector would, uh, would significantly grow. The need for transformer oils, which is what uh, this is uh, 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 showing that transformer oil demand would, would be very bright uh, because uh, even though even, even electrification, electric vehicles, uh, installation of uh, charging stations, uh, improving uh, distribution and transmission network, uh, whether solar, uh, solar power is uh, set up, whether wind power is set up, everything would need a uh, 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 good, uh, solid, rob robust transmission and transmission network, and that would need transform royals. And in the chemical sector, uh, which, which includes all these uh, industries, there is significant growth opportunities. Again, I'll, I'll just touch on uh, which other segment would see some negative impact, that is the railways, and that is especially in the engine oil space where railways would see some negative impact. But uh, other than that, infrastructure growth is happening, which will support uh, metal industry, which will support the cement industry, uh, all, all the, all the uh, uh, manufacturing setup uh, uh, that are being set up uh, that, would, uh, that would positively impact uh, almost, almost all, all the industries which are shown here. Yes, uh, I also have in the center of the screen, you can see the growth, uh, growth projections from Klein, uh, which shows, okay, the growth in the first half of the 10-year uh, forecast for us is, is, uh, is strong, almost close to 3%, but it would slightly taper down to around 2, 2.5% over the, over the second half of the growth period.